Kelly's Reading Corner, Kelly's Reading Corner. Because what else would I be doing with two kids during a pandemic but reading picture books? So join us. Hey guys, welcome back to Kelly's Reading Corner. And today I'm very excited to share with you a sequel. This is The Memoirs of a Hamster, written again by Devin Sicilian and illustrated by Tim Bowers. You might remember a few weeks ago, we read The Memoirs of a Goldfish, and now I would like to present to you the ponderings of another little pet who is obviously having the urge to write his memoirs. So let's dive in. Look at him. He's so cute. All right. Ooh. Here we go. There's his cage. Night one. My life is perfect. I have a bowl full of seeds, a cozy pile of wood shavings, and room to run. I'm never leaving here. Who is the luckiest hamster in the world? Answer. He certainly looks happy, doesn't he? Oh, night two. Oh, he's getting busy there. I was just telling myself, Seymour, yes, his name is Seymour. Seymour, you've got it made. When my exercise wheel was delivered, I like to work out. It's the best model around, the Fuzzy Boy 360. Shiny as a new dime and fast as lightning. I don't know how many miles I put in, but I was on the wheel all night. So a little, a little factoid about these guys. They are nocturnal. And they make a lot of noise. Uh, I believe my dad had one when he was little and it was so noisy at night. I believe he put the cage in the closet. <laughs> so this little guy may have been running in the closet. <laughs> it took me a while to get the hang of my new water bottle, but it's great. It's important, too. A hamster has to stay hydrated. Anyways, back to my wheel. I've got another hour to put in before daylight. <sighs> Night four. Little girl came by and gave me a kiss on the nose. Nasty. Oh, hello. Ever heard of germs? But... She also gave me two yogurt drops. Question, what's better than a yogurt drop? Answer, two yogurt drops. I ate one, and I tucked it out of my cheek to save for later. This hamster's got it going on. Night five. I was just climbing onto my wheel tonight when Pearl the cat came by. You know, she said, you run for miles every night, but you never leave the cage. What is it all for? I don't know, I said. It's what hamsters do. What a complete waste of time, she said. Have fun in your cage. I'm going to the sunroom. Sunroom? What's a sunroom? Hmm. Oh. Oh, night six. The little girl woke me up to clean my cage today. She kissed me on the nose again. Barf! She needs to cut that out. But while she was carrying me around, I realized there's a lot of house around me that I haven't seen. It seems to go on forever. I tried hard as I could, but I couldn't see a sunroom. Oh, but I see a familiar fishy face right there. I see the goldfish having fun with Mervyn the snail and Mr. Bubbles. So yeah. They're in the same house together, and they're all writing. That's nice. All right, little girl gave me a ro yogurt drop, and I completely forgot about the sunroom. Whatever the sunroom is, is it better than a yogurt drop? Answer, no. <sighs> Night seven. Oh, she does not look like she's up to good, any good at all. I planned on running a marathon tonight, but my Fuzzy Boy 360 is a little squeaky. Pearl came over to the cage looking a little annoyed. 
You really need to get yourself out of there, she said. But why, I ask. I've got my wheel, I've got my seeds, I've got my yogurt drops. You wouldn't need a wheel out here, she said. There's plenty of room to run. The staircase is made of sunflower seeds. What? And the room is filled with yogurt drops. Answer, is she telling the truth? No. As she walked away, she turned around and said, Watch out for Hoover. Hoover? What's Hoover? Oh, he doesn't look so happy now. Night eight. I didn't sleep a wink all day. A little girl came by and kissed me on the nose. Yuck! And then I had a terrible workout. I just couldn't focus. How could I concentrate knowing what I know? Imagine a whole staircase made of sunflower seeds and the sunroom. Don't I deserve to be in a sunroom? Oh. Buck the dog came by to give my cage a sniff. And I said, Buck, do you like the sunroom? And big goofy Buck said, I love the sunroom. It's so sunny. And he trotted away. Hmm. Oh, he's having a good time. Oh, night nine. Something's going on here. No workout tonight. I spent the whole evening putting together a plan. I went over every square inch of my cage, and I think I've got it figured out. Operation Tasty Treat is set for tomorrow night. Hello, staircase. Hello, sunroom. Night ten. Good old Seymour is one smart hamster. My escape went like clockwork. I moved the seed dish, then I was able to muscle the fuzzy boy to the front of the cage. I had a little trouble climbing the outside of the wheel. It kept spinning, and I wasn't getting anywhere. Was he ever getting anywhere on that thing? Answer? No. But Sweet Pearl suggested I jam a sunflower seed at the side of the wheel, and it worked. After that, it was easy. I shimmed up the wheel, popped the lid right off. Question? Who's going to eat every yogurt drop in the sunroom? Answer, me. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. What happens now? Just look at that face. <sighs> Night 11. Note to self. Cats are big, fat liars. I'm writing this from under the sofa. One wrong move and Pearl will have me for dinner. For starters, the staircase is not made of sunflower seeds. It's just carpet. It tastes like sweater. And the sunroom is nice, but there wasn't a yogurt drop in sight. And when I heard Pearl, the big fat liar, say, hello, sir, I knew something was wrong. <laughs> She looked really hungry, but all of that time on the wheel paid off. I raced past her and squeezed out of the sunroom just in time. I made it here, but what now? Pearl keeps clawing under the sofa, the big fat liar. I'll probably never see my cage again. Question, who's in big trouble? Answer, me. Oh boy, what will our hero do now? Oh, night 12. Oh, the dark night of the soul for the hamster. I'm doomed. I'll never make it out of here alive. I can see Pearl pacing back and forth. She says she's looking at recipes. Ooh. Where did you get a recipe for hamster? And, and how is the cat Googling? I tore a tag off the bottom of the sofa, found an old pencil, and wrote out my will. I, Seymour Q. Hamster, being of tired mind and hungry body, leave my fuzzy boy 360 to my 17 brothers. I leave my water bottle to my 22 sisters. And to my sweet mother and father, I leave the four yogurt drops hidden in the corner of my cage. I won't be needing them. I sniffed a few times and fell asleep. Goodbye, friends. I love you all. 
It's a very dramatic hamster. Oh, my 13. <gasps> What's going on? So hungry and tired, I could barely move. I heard Pearl purring the way she does when she sleeps. It was my only chance. I tiptoed out from the back of the sofa and headed straight for my cage. I was going to make it. But suddenly, there was a terrible noise, and it sounded like a hurricane. <gasps> An enormous monster was coming right at me. I looked up at its terrible eyes and read the most frightening word. Hoover. <gasps> it was trying to suck me inside. Back, back. Buck heard the commotion, and he started barking like crazy, and that woke up Pearl, the big fat liar who hissed, he's mine, and started racing right toward me. Hoover had me by the tail. Pearl was swiping at me with her claws. Buck was howling like mad. I was a goner. I closed my eyes and waited for it to be all over. And then came the sweetest thing I have ever heard. Seymour! It was suddenly very quiet. Hoover, Pearl, and Buck stopped in their tracks, and one surprised but happy little girl got to me first. She kissed me on the nose. A lovely, beautiful, sweet kiss. And I kissed her right back. Twice. Oh, the goldfish would be proud. Oh. Night 14. My life is perfect. I have a bowl full of seeds, a cozy pile of wood shavings, and room to run. I am never leaving here. Question. Who's the luckiest hamster in the world? Answer. Me. Oh, Seymour Q Hamster. Well, I'm really glad that he got back to his cage because... That's kind of where hamsters are best. You know, there's no hoovers, there's no cats, there's no dogs, there's no little girls with lips. Although he doesn't seem to mind the kisses so much anymore, does he? Hmm? No, he doesn't. Well, I'm glad that I could bring to you another pet memoir um, as we are all inside hanging out together. We might be feeling a little bit like a hamster in a cage, but remember, we can go outside. We can get out for walks. Maybe even you can take some, some sunflower seeds and have a snack on the way and think about Seymour and how happy he is. So thank you very much for joining me and we will see you again on Kelly's Reading Corner. Take care, bye. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the story. And if you hit that little subscribe button down there, you won't miss the next time I go live. And we will see you next time on Kelly's Reading Corner. I'm Kelly Wilk, and this has been Ginger Cat Production.